Welcome back to your average witch, where we talk about witch life, witch stories, and sometimes a little witchcraft. Today we meet Trey, a college student in South Dakota. Trey talks to us about finding community as a young witch, the need for intersectionalism in the witchcraft community, and tells a wild story about a bike ride. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to check out our sponsor, Bright Witch Brews. Visit brightwitch.com for tea, magical tea time tales, and 15% off your order with code YAW. Now let's get to the stories. Hello, Trey. Thanks for coming on the show. Hi, glad to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, would you please introduce yourself and let people know who you are, where they can find you? My name is Trey Leisure, pronouns they, he, she. My Instagram is the same name, Trey Leisure, L E A. S U R E. And I'm just a little, a little witch, college freshman, living life. With cute hair. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it always makes me happy. So, what does it mean to you when you call yourself a witch? It means a lot of things. I'm, my practice is very eclectic. So when I like meet new people, I usually say like, I'm a hippie and that's really all you need to know because <laughs> there's, there's a lot to behind that. Um, but to me, really the definition of being a witch is really just living truthfully and intentfully. And yeah, it's, it's all about for, for my practice, at least using energies, sending energies where you want them to be just to create your life the way you want it to be however necessary do you have any family history with witchcraft not at all both my parents are big time christians <laughs> are you out to them yes but we don't like discuss it they just look at my crystal table and like confusion and then move on <laughs> do you feel like you were doing witchcraft before you understood what it meant i would i would definitely say so i i started witchcraft probably my junior year of high school but like i had been pretty spiritual before that and like you know i i am How do I want to, how do I want to word this? I've been just very, a nature-based kind of guy, um, and very easygoing and an empath. I, I'm an empath and I've definitely experienced that before I knew what it was, but then, yeah, then I got into witchcraft. What was you say what would you say is your first actual experience with it? Like my first exposure to it was um Harmony Nice on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I kind of found out about it and like started researching. I was like, "Hmm, what's this?" But then my first actual I guess delving into the craft was uh when i warded my room um i did a big like protection ritual and it wasn't the it by no means was the best because it was my first ritual and i was like hmm i think i want to ward so that i don't get like nightmares but yeah it was it was a good first experience but i have i've learned so much since it doesn't really even compare <laughs> I think everybody's first quote unquote spell should be some sort of warding or protection. Yeah, because some, a lot of people are like, oh, I want to find love. Let me do a, a wow. love <laughs> ritual. And like, oh boy, that's. Okay, that, here's, yeah. here's my opinion. Not on love, but on witchcraft in general. <laughs> a lot of it is is a placebo effect. But if you think you're more protective and you've protected and you feel safer, then your intent gets stronger because you're like, oh, this worked. 
And if your yeah. intent's stronger, it's more likely to work later when you do something else. Yeah. So having that protection spell, not dying, <laughs> just reinforces yourself. <laughs> Yeah, Thank you, no, ladies and I gentlemen. Agree. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, yeah, no, I I totally agree with that though. Um, you know, if it works, it doesn't matter how it works, as long as it works, you know, rather it's a crystal vibrating at a certain frequency or it's you telling yourself that that vibration is going to change anything exactly would you pl if you have any daily rituals would you please share them with us i don't have any like set in stone like every day i do this this and this but every day i do like try and connect with myself usually in the morning um, before I go to classes, I I wake up an hour and a half before my first class just because I need my time in the morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I I'm big into yoga, so not every day, but most days I will try and roll out my mat and do Surya Namaskar or sun salutation. And then the last thing I always do before I go out to class is I my little it's not quite an altar but i guess you could call it my altar space is set up in front of a mirror and so i'll like just look in the mirror i'll look at my crystals and or some jewelry and like i'll put on i've got a, a necklace that i've got enchanted for protection and i've got one for mindfulness and i'll put those on and say my little intention for the day whatever it is i want to feel i'm big big about intention setting but I don't have any, like, daily stuff besides that. Me neither, really. I, I envy people who are like, oh, I blah, blah, tea and stir things a certain yeah. direction. I'm like, wow. I just don't like hot liquids in the morning. I only want water. <laughs> yeah, And same. who cares if I stir my water? I mean, I guess I could do the whole placebo effect to myself, but it's just water. <laughs> <laughs> Since I don't think it's going to do anything because it's just water, I'm like, why? I'm not going to fuck my life up today by doing that. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got you've got a wet spoon, and like you just used it for water, so like you could exactly. use it again, but yeah. But then it's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what would you say is your biggest motivator in your practice? Wow, never thought about that. <laughs> um, Me neither. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the one inter being interviewed. <laughs> My craft is very, I don't want to say wellness focused, but it's its a lot about just trying to enable positivity for myself and anyone around me. And so a lot of the motivation would be just sort of setting myself up for success like um with the yoga i like to start my morning with that to wake my body up wake my energy up to just feel good for the day so a lot of the motivation would be you know feeling good and creating that positive space both mentally and energetically oh my gosh i need to do that <laughs> I need to do that. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, I mean, it's, a yeah, a big part of just wellness and even outside of the craft. I mean, like my therapist always is about that. She always says to pick like an intention for the week. Um, and the she, whole week? she always, yeah, a whole week. So this week, um, I just had therapy on Friday. Um, and this, uh, whole week she wants my intention to be patience she wants me to radiate and embody patience wake up thinking patience she what she was like you know put a post-it note by the light switch on your laptop make that your passcode for your phone or whatever and hmm. i i take a lot of stuff from therapy like into <laughs> i guess just into my life and therefore into my craft 
because it's yeah i don't know it's, it's i mean a, it's a good idea how, that's how oh, shadow work works yeah yeah and i'm simultaneously good and bad at shadow work like i want to be good i want to do it and like improve but it's it's not an easy thing um so i always try to moderate success and envy others who are all about it <laughs> i thought i thought that i was pretty good and then i went down on his purpose and spent basically the whole weekend crying Damn. <laughs> you gotta that. come you gotta come gone. next year you gotta come i next really year. want to i hope i can i'm no, gonna tell everyone i, I know i'm setting the intention <laughs> yes <laughs> how do you deal with imposter syndrome oh um can you define what you mean by imposter syndrome? Oh no, why are you asking me a question? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? That's not how this works at all. <laughs> For me, uh, the, if I say I'm dealing with imposter syndrome, I feel like I present this image of whatever a witch, a person who know, has their shit together, although I don't really try to portray that, but a witch, like a, an adult who knows how to do life, somebody who is actually a, a licensed certified occupational <laughs> therapy assistant. Um, <laughs> and I, uh, and the imposter syndrome is this voice in the back of your head that says, you know you're lying to everyone and they will find out that you are lying and that you are not good at anything and witchcraft isn't real and you are a farce. That's imposter syndrome. Um, okay. Um, I would, I don't actually let imposter syndrome affect me that much um not to say i'm immune to it i definitely do get that um usually when like you know there's a lot of other people like trying to i don't want to say peek behind the curtain but just like trying to look in and i'm like whoa all these people and then i just remind myself um that i'm doing this for myself and not for anyone else so it doesn't matter how they think or what they think about me because it's not for them they i mean honestly they can fuck off and i'm still gonna be sitting here doing my practice happy happy as i can be or at least trying to be so yeah good. i guess that's how good i approve <laughs> of that <laughs> <laughs> would you say that you have a coming out story as a witch well at least not one that i know of <laughs> i i don't I don't have like a momentous occasion where I let everyone know, but apparently um, I I had a reputation at school as being a witch. I didn't know huh. this for the longest time, but one of my best, best friends um, who I'm actually in a coven with, um, she like got into spirituality and witchcraft because of me. Like she knew, oh, Trey, that the witch... And then she was like, wait, what is that? I want to learn more. But I didn't know any of this was happening. So I don't know. I don't know who knew, who knew, who told, who, why. But apparently the whole school knew that I was a witch, which I'm fine with. Before you did or? <laughs> well, no, I, I, I knew I was a witch at the time. Okay. Because <laughs> that would be kind of funny. Knew. It would. <laughs> What would you say is your biggest struggle with your practice? Ooh, honestly, I would say it is like, I don't want to say perfectionism. I don't know. Um, Like when the time comes for a ritual, like we've got a full moon on Monday and the autumn equinox on Wednesday. So lots of big stuff to do. Um, it would just be kind of getting in my own head, like, oh, I want to have a great, great celebration for the Sabbath, 
uh, so I want to do everything right. Let me go out and get all the ingredients for a cake or for a pie, I guess would be right for this Sabbath, an apple pie. And I'm going to thank all these deities and do all this stuff. And then I like create a big to-do list of crap that I don't need to do. And then I end up doing nothing because I'm like, holy fuck, I have so much to do. But yeah, I would just say kind of trying to bite off more than I can chew. What's brought you the most joy out of your practice? Honestly, I would say just seeing the positive effects. Like, <laughs> it, it it is a reinforcing to know that I'm not crazy, but I just love seeing the positive effect on it, not only in my life, but just seeing it radiate outward. Like, I, I'm just here trying to live my truth and be happy. And then I see other people who respond positively to that. And it, it makes me so proud um, and happy and meaningful <laughs> when I'm just, like, doing something that, like, I'm doing to do. And then other people see it and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's like, you look you look like you're being so happy. I want to like join you and like improve. And I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, please better your life. I love that. I love inspiring positive change. That's lovely. <laughs> what is something that you wish someone had told you when you were first starting out? To not get so caught up in things. Because there's, there's, there's a lot of... Like, especially looking at Wicca, nothing against Wicca, but it is, I think it's a lot of people's first exposure, or uh, it's a common first exposure to witchcraft. And, I mean, when you're reading Wicca by Scott Cunningham, and you're like, oh my gosh, wait, I need all of these things on my altar, like, I need... I need to do this and this. Like, I need to have a robe and I need to be naked underneath. <laughs> have a robe. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, there's, there's a lot of, um, what's the word? Like, accoutrement. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that fun to um, say? It is. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend is French, so I like to flare it up. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh, that reminds that I'll reminds probably horrify me of my... her, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want to get too sidetracked, but that reminds me of my ballet teacher whenever we're speaking in like ballet jargon. She always puts like intense accents on stuff and it's always funny to see this sixty year old lady getting nitpicky about her tendu and her French oh. accent. I love it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it is so fun. And I always, I always just American right through it, but. <laughs> um... That's the perfect description. <laughs> <laughs> just, just American English it. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of just hubbub and bubbub about stuff that I mean if it's good and it works like don't drop it you know but you don't have to worry about every every little detail I I, I guess I hear it a lot now but um take what works and leave the rest I I wish I would have embodied that uh, when I was beginning my craft I would have seen a lot more progress I think oh Listen up, children. I mean, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think a lot of people spread that message now. Um, and it could just be now that I'm more into it. But when I was first getting into it, like, I didn't hear it much. And I was, like, trying to do a bunch of stuff, and then I would end up doing nothing. I think something that also happens to people who are new at anything is they want hard, fast, black and white, yes, no rules. So they feel yeah. safe. And for somebody who's experienced, like in the kitchen, uh, I don't really measure things. But if I yeah. was teaching my niece how to cook, I would give her exact measurements. Because if you screw up your entire dinner because you put a tablespoon of salt instead of a pinch, because you don't know what it means when salt to taste... <laughs> You're not going to want to cook again. 
Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's actually a perfect analogy or not not um similarity with the craft cuz a lot of the craft is you know sense based feel based it's not definitely not black and white yeah I, it was very frustrating for me to start out <laughs> i was very rigid i still what's am your, very rigid but not in my craft what what's your top 3 of what sun sign or like astrology oh 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 top three signs. uh taurus sun uh aries moon gemini rising i don't remember where my virgo is oh <laughs> oh i don't know where my virgo is either virgo <laughs> oh we're in virgo season right now time to pretend like we've got our crap together oh i'm not good at that <laughs> <laughs> me neither <laughs> You've been saying that this entire half hour. <laughs> as far as me. What would you say is your best and or worst experience with witchcraft? Story time. Hit me with it. Oh. Oh, stories. Your most successful one that you when you're like, yeah, hell yeah, I'm a witch. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Probably something involving sigils, for sure. I always feel super witchy when I'm making sigils. Well, talk to um, me about oh. sigils because I don't do sigils. Okay, actually, I have a wonderful story from over quarantine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I was, I don't know what I was doing, but then, but I got the, uh, okay, I was work looking at runes. Um, and I made a bind rune, um, like for myself, that's kind of like my personal, when I'm doing anything with the craft, like I've got it drawn on the front of my book of shadows in a sparkly silver marker. Like Ooh. it's, it's my personal bind rune and I use it for everything. I love it. And I was making, I wanted like a physical ward i guess not like a like i wanted something physical to tie that energy to because i'd always just done like energetic wards around my room or like make a combination of like salt and like you know a little bit of cinnamon and some other herbs and then line like windowsills and door frames with that but i wanted to like create an energetic ward around my room and imbue like that energy into some something physical to kind of keep keep that up to represent that and so i made a watercolor painting with my my little bind rune on it and then i like set my intention for the wards or whatever like i made a mantra which is like a big thing for my practice anytime I'm doing something I always try and boil down what I'm doing into like a one or two sentence mantra and then I turned that into a sigil and then like I drew the sigil and I drew the little bind rune and I watercolored it in with like a bunch of fun colors around I tried to use you know the four colors to represent the elements yeah and then I sat and meditated with it a bit tried to put some energy into that paper um and then i just went around and did my wards and stuff with that paper but yeah that that was a fun a fun moment and when i looked at back at it at the end i was like oh baby oh baby i've got some weird ass symbols on a paper with a bunch of colors i feel like a witch i am feeling my oats <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see, I'm okay with, I understand not wanting to share that particular one, but I would love to see some other work like that if you'll share it. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm not like a big artist. I want to be so bad, but I am just not that, I'm not the best at it. But yeah, I would definitely, I'm even fine with you seeing that one. I believe Ooh. I brought it to my dorm. Is it yeah, on your Insta? No, I'm, oh, I'm, I would not put it on my Insta if it were me, but... <laughs> <laughs> it it is not. I actually don't really use my Insta. I have like 
three posts in the last like year and a half. Good for you. <laughs> I sh- I probably should start posting more, but oh well. Yeah, do whatever. Um, but you yeah, want. no, I'll, I'll definitely. <laughs> I'll, I'll send some yeah, stuff yeah, I want to see it. Yay! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm excited. That just yeah, sounds no pretty. Problem. I just love watercolors. Me too. That's that's why I have a plethora of watercolor pencils and a few tubes of watercolor because I want to be that. I, I want to be that person. <laughs> Me too. I just don't have anything to do it because I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite Sabbath? And how do you celebrate it? I would probably say Luna Psalm is my favorite Sabbath. Bread. The... Yes, yes, I love. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I have a recipe that I always make. It is a lemon poppy seed bread. Oh my god! It is so good. You've I have already love hurt it my feelings. I... <laughs> And I, I always witchcraft it. I love it. Ooh. Um, so I, I do a little bit of kitchen witchery with it. Um, I do it for, once again, positivity. Um, I, I put in some, um, obviously poppy seed, but like I, I, I do, I do it special. Like every, every time I've got a little herb that I'm gonna do, I put it in my hands and you know say my intention typical um kitchen witchcraft and i set my intention for bringing positivity um and joy to all who eat it and to the home in which i am baking it Aww. which will soon be my dorm i'm excited you can, you to have a, an oven make a bread um there's like a little kitchenette on our floor with Yay. an oven so I'm gonna. I I probably am not gonna make anything on Wednesday. I wish I could make an apple pie, but that's very time consuming. And I'm in college. I'm in 17 credit hours. I can't be doing that. Oh no! <laughs> what? I would go for like <laughs> nine. Jesus. <laughs> the the minimum is 12, and the max is 18. Oh. See, I don't like to do full time anything except fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I I wish I wasn't doing full time anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, uh, bread, lemon bread, yeah, 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 wonderful. Um, and it I sounds love... lovely. Thank you. It is it is my favorite. I I make it. I don't know, only make it then. Sometimes I make it if I just want lemon bread, but I love it. And then I I I put a little icing on it. That's literally just lemon juice and powdered sugar Ooh. um it's it is so good i it's um i don't remember where i got the recipe i believe i got it from like the have you heard of amino like the pagan yeah. which is amino yeah i think i found it on there somewhere and then just like made it my own um but i could be wrong about that and but also i am big into i'm i love bridget i i work with a few different deities but i love bridget and so whenever her time of the year comes around i i'm always ready huh. are you ready for the roller coaster <laughs> <laughs> the roller coaster what do you hate about the witch community um oh boy we're gonna come back up you can get down and dirty if you want to (laughs) i'm a big solitary practitioner like i've i do basically everything alone i i did mention i was in a coven earlier three of my besties from high school were all big into witchcraft and so we say we're a coven, but we've never actually done like a group ritual. But you know, you got to have each other's backs. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's just like a big, I don't want to say expectation, but there's like a lot of projection about like, I don't want to say being in a coven, but like just being very open with your practice with like a big group of people and like, 
which I mean, I am open with my practice. Like I'll tell a stranger on the street, I'm a witch, but that expectation of like, oh, it's, it's, you know, whatever, do this and share it with a bunch of people, like have a big community thing. Like I've always lived in very conservative places in America not a big witch community. Not a lot of people I like, can go out and like tell about my 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 spellcraft and you know share some kitchen witch goodies with. So I would just say yeah, that expectation of like you know, and I mean it's it probably stems from just like adult married witches sharing shit with their like husband or whatever. But I don't know. I I would definitely say the big expectation on sharing shit, like, it's just not all that practical. For some of us, at least. I do not share things when I'm working on them, absolutely. Other than very vague references. I might, like, working with you guys as patrons, that's, like, the closest I've worked with anyone. Oh, damn. Until Anna Hata's Purpose. We did some stuff there. And not even very much. I still work closer with you guys than I do with them. Like, I've oh, wow. never shared spells with anyone. Really? Yeah. Wow. So I agree. I feel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to say that I wish the community was more accessible you know like i don't know it's it's not that it's just i mean i don't know there there's not always a time and space to share it and i think that's okay i think we need to you know drop that you know we don't have to share it's a lot more personal when you're just holding holding that stuff to yourself i think i agree yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to go back up. What do you love about the Wish community? I I love how everyone wants everyone to succeed. I know there's like a lot of talk about gatekeeping, but when like at least when you're with the good witches, like everyone's just like trying their best to like learn and to share as much as they can. I I feel like it's a very open place. If you're looking in the right places, at least, I feel like it's a very open community where a lot of people just want want positivity and they want the best for others. And yeah, I love that. Yeah, I I agree. For the most part, that is what I see as well. Good, good. Because I've I've been hearing a lot about gatekeeping lately. And I mean, I do. It's like agree a buzzword with it to an extent. It is. It is. And it is something be- to dislike. But yeah, we're working on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and I don't think it's you know too much of a problem that it is fully like affecting witchcraft as a thing. I think there's just some people who are not as open to sharing their knowledge with others, and they need to stop that. What do you wish more people were talking about? I I wish people would talk more about the different varieties of witchcraft. I mean, there's like... Um, not just in the witchcraft community. This is a little bit, you know, slightly removed from the witchcraft community. There's, like, just a a big, like, spiritual wash. Like, oh, look at these crystals and meditation and, you know, that's it. Uh, when you get into, like, actual witchcraft communities, they, there is more to it than that. But I wish people would be, would share more about the different styles. Like, you can you can be stirring intention into your cup of tea every day and that can be your craft or you could be like fully like you know gardenerian 
naked under the moonlight. Or you could be a shaman. Like, there's, like, so many different paths. And I just wish it were more apparent, the varieties. Something else I wish uh, people would talk about more is... Oh, well, okay, and I guess this stems back to, to something that I hate about the craft. Not Not really, but is gender representation and just the LGBTQ community as a whole in the craft... There is a book that shall not be named, uh, mainly because I can't remember the title, but that is all, like, it basically just says, if you're a witch, your power emanates from your vagina, and if you don't have one, you're not a witch. I know what book it is, and I know who wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, called, I've yelled out <laughs> the name here before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, um, No. Just no. If I'm in, there's lots of schools of thought, but I think if you're alive, then you've got the power, you know, emanating in you because it's, it's, you know, we're, we're living 3D manifestations of universal energy right now. We're currently living a 3D manifestation of universal energy where universal energy just manifested in this 3d realm i was thinking about my water and then suddenly you busted that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm a very energy-based person i i believe in like reincarnation and i think i'm just currently you know, I'm I'm the energy of the universe incarnated physically. I may reincarnate physically again or in some other form, but he, we all humans are radiating this this universal energy, this light energy, this whatever you want to call it, the God or whatever. Um, and people come in a lot of you know shapes and sizes. <laughs> um. There's, you know, gender, gender for me, I identify as gender queer or gender nonconforming. And it's, it's not a set in stone thing. And like, I, I don't, I, I don't see that representation as much in the media. There's some, you know, there's. A lot of female witches out there. There's male witches out there. There's gay witches out there. But I don't really see much in the way of like transgender or non-binary witches. And I think it is definitely just as valid, okay, to practice if you are other. Because that's what witches are. I mean, historically, look at look at what being a witch is. We're not at the top of the food chain. And so, yeah, I just think people should, in the witchcraft community, we should try and highlight more gender-differing witches and creators because it's it's not a binary thing. And to me, it's not even a set-in-stone thing. It changes, like... Uh, energy does uh, you could wake up one day and feel terrible wake up another day and feel great to me that's how gender is it's kind of just an in-between thing it's always changing and growing just like we are that was so insightful thank you for that thank well yeah um i don't know i just try my best <laughs> well it was great Thanks. Who would you say are the three biggest influences on your practice? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know if you're going to like this, but honestly, I'm probably going to have to say Macy, Charlie, and Kim. Me? Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> you, I, I know. You probably don't want to hear it, but... <laughs> It's that imposter syndrome, dude. <laughs> um, I mean, yeah. 
because I always I listen to both your podcast and Witch Bitch Amateur Hour, um, and it's just Witch Bitch Amateur Hour, Macy and Charlie. Um, it's just a such a fun podcast to listen to. I love yes. them. I love hearing the banter. Yes. Just, great chemistry and and i always love what i learn like it's a great way to learn about some shit that you didn't know there was and so that's that's why i would say those two because they they always every every wednesday i don't usually wish not listen on wednesdays i usually end up listening on thursdays but i just get get a little a little bomb of knowledge and then afterwards, I'm always like, ooh, yay, witchcraft. Let me go read a book. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, with your podcast, I love being able to hear other witches in the community and connect. And I am I love your Patreon. I love all the, all the jewelry, all the spell kits. Like, I'm here for it. So. Aww. Yay, thank you. Thank you for sending me a Christmas gift every month. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it feels like and i always feel like i get a free necklace with it too even though like i pay ten dollars extra to be part of the patreon that gets a jewelry it always feels like a free gift <laughs> i hope like the next thing's coming oh i bet i will <laughs> the charms they're so cute i just love them they are. I'm excited to get the charms. I love the necklace. I'm tomorrow. Oh God, tomorrow's the full moon. I need to prepare. Right. But tomorrow, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna like cleanse it and you know get it ready energetically. Who would you like to see on the show next? Shit, I was dreading this question. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of the Green Witch on YouTube? Maybe. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I may have. My brain stores things in weird ways, and names aren't always part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I I relate. She's a YouTuber who. Um, she's a very nature based, as I'm sure you could guess by her name. And yeah, I just love her, her, honestly, her craft. Like, I love hearing about what she does and shit. Um, and so I think an interview from her would be incredible. She's um, currently living in the city and she's like, she talks a lot about the change from that to, uh, from living in the country, but it's, it's very nature based and very relaxing. Um, and I love, I don't know, I just love the way she teaches. Okay, last two things. Okay. Please recommend something to the listeners. I'm going to recommend a book because I love books. There's a book I've been reading called Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramahansa Yogananda. It's not... It's, um, he was a, uh, well, he was a swamp, he's a big, uh, Hindu person, influence, I don't know the right word, um, but he wrote a book before he died, um, and it's, like, literally his autobiography, but it is so insightful, I've learned so much and I'm very not far into it. I'm only like 130 pages and it's like 550. Good night. <laughs> I've, been, I've been reading it for, I think, a month now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, I just, I love it. I've learned so much. And, and a lot of it is like based in Hinduism. So if that's not your jig, then you might not like it. But I mean, even if you don't like practice Hinduism, it's there's still so much that you can learn and so much that's applicable just to life i mean love it 
Me too. I love that book. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing, please tell me a story that you love to tell. I was biking downhill on a gravel road with my same friend and one of the like <laughs> one of the screws that holds like the tire cover in place like not um I I don't know what it's called but like the metal bit like the on, fender maybe or like the, the, like the one bit of the bars like on the top it was just like a, a sh metal sheet that like kind of went over the top of the tire and it had like metal bars going down to like the center of the tire is that a thing i, I would call it a fender are you it, gonna tell it's me that probably fell off? that well i was biking downhill down a gravel hill um and the screw was loose like one of the one of the bolts i think was loose and like you know, the gravel was, like, agitating it. And then it, the screw came off. And the the fender, like, because I was still biking, but it just went with the tire. And I oh. I biked over, like, I, I rolled over, like, <laughs> once or twice. And then it, like, <laughs> wrapped. <laughs> it, like, wrapped around the tire. It made me snort. Like, it got caught. <laughs> <laughs> and and it like oh, it like no. fully like just gripped my tire and like the metal was all bent and shit and it was like <laughs> two or three days after I learned how to bike <laughs> um and thankfully I didn't get hurt when I when I fell or anything but Allie and I were just like going down a hill and then that happened and we were like well <laughs> what do we do now <laughs> we tried to like push my bike back to my house but the front tire wouldn't rotate <laughs> <laughs> and so it was a very very long and awkward oh, walk no. <laughs> and then we finally <laughs> we finally got back to my house and we we were like in my garage, like going through my dad's tools, trying to be like, "How? What the fuck do we do? What does this do?" <laughs> <laughs> and then we, instead of trying to, to unscrew the other um, screw and like you know unwrap the metal from my tire, which seems like a logical plan, we tried to get like. Like pliers or like wire cutters, <laughs> and we were gonna try and like cut the like thin metal support off, like to just oh, that cut it off. Way tougher than you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> we we quickly realized that, and then I don't know what we ended up doing. I. I don't actually know. I think we just like gave up on cutting and unscrewed it. And then like thankfully my tire wasn't wasn't um jacked. Like <laughs> yeah. It it was fine. Okay. So I just like pumped up pumped it up with a little bit of air and then it was good to go. And then and then yeah, we just went biking again. We were supposed to be like zooming our class. Because it was like while we were in quarantine for high school. And so we just threw Zoom on our phones and like attached it to like our bike handlebar. And then Zoomed our history of rock and pop professor while biking around the neighborhood. What? <laughs> yeah, he's he was, he was our choir director and our show choir director. Because it was like while we were in quarantine for high school. And so we just through zoom on our phones and like attached it to like our bike handlebar and then zoomed our history of rock and pop professor while biking around the neighborhood what <laughs> yeah he's he was he was our choir director and our show choir director so like we'd already known him but we just biked around on zoom listening to old music and it was fun that's amazing <laughs> well thank you so much for being on the show yeah, no problem. Thank you for having me. 
I will see you around the internet. Yes. I'm I'm excited for my next monthly box. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of Your Average Witch. You can find us all around the internet on Instagram at Your Average Witch Podcast, Twitter at Average Witch Pod, Facebook at Facebook.com slash Your Average Witch Podcast, at Your Average Witch Podcast.com, and at your favorite podcast service. Want to help the podcast grow? Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You just might hear your review read at the end of the next episode. If you'd like to recommend someone for the podcast, like to be on it yourself, or if you'd like to advertise on the podcast, send an email to youraveragewitchpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the moon changes.